Hi, this is Mrs. Kidman, and in this video, we're going to be discussing permutations. So permutations are an arrangement of objects where order is important. So what that means is that as we're looking at the order of something, where things are located matters. For example, if I say I roll a six and then a three on a dice, that's very different than rolling a three and then a six if order matters. If order doesn't matter, then those two things would be the same. So with permutations, that order matters. So let's talk about how many ways we can organize the letters in the word wolf where order matters. Well, let's take a look by looking. We by starting. We've got wolf, obviously, and then we can go W O S L. We could do W L O F. We can do W L F O. We could do W F L O W F O L, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, who here wants to continue doing that? None of us. But let's talk about how many ways we can organize this letter thinking theoretically instead of actually listing out all those options like we did in 5.1. So let's talk about the very first time when we pick a letter for that very first letter that we choose from, how many options do we have? That's right, we have four. The very first time I can either pick W, O, L, or F. And then after that, so that's for the first letter. Then for the second letter, I've already picked one of them. So how many options do I have left? Well, there's only one W. So if I pick W first, I only have O, L, or F left. So I only have three options the second time. The third time, I've picked two letters already. So I have the other two letters left. And the fourth time, I've already picked three of the letters. So I really only have one choice there. So what happens here is the ways we can organize this by that fundamental counting principle that says that I can multiply these options that I have together. And that's going to give me 24 different options. Now we can list out all 24 options, but that seems tedious and might take time. Now, the cool thing about this that we see, this idea of four times three times two times one is something that a lot of mathematicians notice the pattern of. And when we see patterns in math, especially things that require a lot of writing, rather than taking the time to write it all out, mathematicians like to find ways to simplify it. So when we see this process of multiplying a number and all of the natural numbers below it, we call it a factorial. And so four times three times two times one is really the same thing as four factorial. And this exclamation point here implies that we're, implies that we're doing a factorial. So this is looking at all of those numbers, all of those natural numbers from whatever number we're looking at below. So four factorial is four times three times two times one. Seven factorial is going to be seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. Now, this is super important because as we're calculating permutations, you can see here in this case that permutations, when we have four letters and we're trying to organize all four letters, really what that turned out to be is the number of letters and the factorial of it, four times three times two times one. So as all of a sudden we start to look at bigger numbers of things that we're choosing from, or instead of choosing the whole thing, choosing part of it, the factorial will really play an important role. So there are two ways to calculate permutations depending on what we're looking at. So the first way is the number of permutations of n objects. So what that's saying is kind of like this last problem that we looked at. How many ways can I organize the letters of the word wolf? Well, I have four letters of the word wolf, and I want to organize all four of them. So what I'm going to do is four permutation four. And the way that we calculate that is we're going to do whatever that number or that n is, our small number there, or four factorial is how that gets calculated. Now, in your cal calculator, you can actually calculate this. What you're going to do is if you have the TI-84 calculator or an 83, they both have the same function. What you can do is you can hit the math button. It's located below the green alpha button on your calculator. And once you hit math, the very first option you should get is frac. Now, what you're going to do before going down, you're going to use your keypad and you're going to go to the right and you're going to click the right arrow button three times. One, two, three. Now, if you look on the top of your screen, it should have highlighted in dark the word PROB or probability. Now, if you look at that drop down option, we actually can see this NPR. Now, what NPR stands for is that's actually our second option there. And what that's talking about is the number of permutations of n objects taken r times. So in this first example here, where we're looking at all of the letters, that means that we're taking n, we have the permutations of n objects, or four letters, and we're going to take that four times. So I'm going to, I have four objects, I'm going to pull four objects out of a hat and figure out how many different combinations I can get. Now, sometimes we pull everything out, sometimes we only pull, pull parts out. And so, for example, something we might see there is how many ways can I organize two letters of the word wolf? Well, that's taken r times because I'm only pulling two letters out. So this would be written as four permutation two. 
meaning I'm, I have four letters to choose from, but I only want the permutations of two of those letters instead of all four. And so the way we can calculate that is if we do it by hand, we're going to do n factorial or 4 factorial over 4 minus 2 factorial. Now, this is a great resource, and we are more than welcome to calculate it by hand every time. But what I would recommend doing is in your calculator. So again, when we click that math, go over 3, if you look down at your second option there, you see that NPR that shows up. If you click enter, you can actually type this right in, that 4 permutations choosing two things, and we end up getting 12 there. And the beautiful thing about that is this will allow us to calculate what we need to calculate without having to go through that whole long factorial process. If you're interested in typing in that factorial, that factorial is actually built in command in our calculators. You're going to do the same thing to find it. So click math, then arrow over with your right arrow three times. And then if you look at your fourth drop down option, you should see, so it says four, you should see this factorial option and you will just click enter and that'll show up after whatever your number is and it'll calculate it for you. So let's practice calculating some permutations here. I'm going to do it on my calculator. Feel free to do it either by hand or with a calculator. As we calculate these five permutations of three or five objects where we select three of them is going to be 60. Seven permutations of four or seven objects where I'm selecting four of them is going to be 840 and eight permutation of two or eight objects and I'm selecting two of them is going to be 56. Now again we can calculate calculate these by hand by doing five factorial over five minus three factorial and that would be five factorial over two factorial which ends up being five times four times three which is 60 as we saw now we can type into the calculator or calculate it out by hand i am happy if you want to do either method but for the sake of this video i am going to calculate it in the calculator if you have questions on how to do that please come and ask and i'm happy to go over it with you so in this next slide, we're going to talk about the number of unique permutations in different letters. So this first one is the word dance. So kind of like in the word wolf, what we have is we have five letters or five objects to choose from, and we want the uni unique permutation of all the letters in this word. So I'm going to find the permutation of all the letter letters or all five. Remember, that's just going to be five factorial if we calculate it by hand. We can type that into our calculator or calculate it by hand, and we will get not 60, but 120 there. Okay, now what about the word rock? Well, we have four options, and we are going to choose all four of those options, and so we are going to end up getting 24 different combinations there. Now, notice how both of these words don't have any repeating letters. What happens when we have repeating letters is that we actually have to take it into account a little bit differently. So what we have to do here is we have to find that original permutation and then we need to divide it by the number of repetitions. So this is the number of repeating for the first letter. And then we do it for the second letter and then the third letter. So let's take a look at this first example here. So find the number of unique permutations of the letters in the word every. Well, we have five options and we're going to pick five. And five permutations of five is 120. Now I have two E's here. So according to our permutations with repetitions calculation, what we're going to do is we're going to divide it by two factorial. That two comes into play because I have two letter E's there. And so we want to make sure that we take into account both of those E's. Now let's take a look as we simplify this. We have 120 divided by two factorial. Well, that's two times one or two. So really, we only have 60 options there. We actually have half as many options as we had before. So let's take a look at the word Mississippi now. So Mississippi has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 letters. So we have 11 objects, and we're going to find the permutation of all 11. So we need to do 11 permutation 11. Now, I'm just going to warn you, that is going to be a huge number. 11 permutation 11 comes out to be, you ready? 39,916,800. Wow. And then we need to divide that monstrosity of a number by the number of repetitions. So let's start with M. Well, there's only one M, but there are four I's. So I'm going to divide that by four factorial. And then there are four S's and then two factorial. And then there are also two P's. So then we are also going to do, oh, that shouldn't be a two. 
four S. So this is our four I's. This is for the four S's and this two factorial is for the two P's. So then what we need to do once we have those is we need to calculate that out. So four factorial, remember, equals 24. And so really what this is saying is I have 24 times 24. So this is really the same thing as 24 times 24 times 2. And 24 times 24 times 2 is going to be 1,152. So as we divide these numbers up, so this huge 39,916,800 divided by 1,152, we end up getting 3,400 or 3,400, I can dog, 34,650 options there. So we end up with 34,650 options or different ways that we can write the letters in the word Mississippi. How crazy is that? So that is basically what a permutation is. What we're doing is we're looking at the number of ways that we can organize those words. Now, I do want to take a quick look at some of the word problems that might relate to it. So this first one here, 10 horses are running in a race. How many different ways can the horses finish first, second, and third? Now notice how they have specific things that they're looking at, so specific places. Those specific places imply that we have an order that matters and that we care about, and that means we're going to look at permutations. So we have 10 objects, and we want to figure out the first three places. So we want 10 permutations of three horses. And so as we figure out that 10 permutations of three horses, what we discover is that we have 720 options of different ways that the horses can finish first, second, or third. So again, anytime that we're dealing with a permutation, we're going to have specific places, whether that's a president and a vice president, whether it's specific job titles, whether it's places, um, first, second, third. Now, it's not going to occur if we're talking about the number of things that are happening. So if we want to know which eight people get to go first, because we don't care if they're going first or last, we just want to know which eight people, that does not have matter, does not matter what the order is. The only time order matters is if we're specifically looking at first place, second place, third place, we're looking at certain job titles, we're looking at specific ideas, and that's when we want to take into account those permutations. And please check out the next video in which we discuss combinations.